We've had a few requests on how we put our routes together when we go hiking and biking and also how we navigate. So what I thought I'd do is put a short video together to show you how I do that. Uh, most of it is done using the phone so I'm just going to uh, go into my phone now and open up the app that I use pretty much all the time, OS Maps. And I need to find a route. We've got about two hours to walk around here. So looking at the map, what I'm doing is I'm looking for places of interest. Uh, and straight down near the coast there I can see Suruby Hall. That looks like it might be interesting. It's got that symbol next to it to say that it's a, uh, a place of interest. Also what draws my attention is those green dots on the on the yellow road there, so that's indicating probably it's a cycle route. And zoom out, see where that goes. We're not biking today, we're hiking, uh, but it did draw my interest. Uh, obviously we've got the coastline here and along the coast we can see the uh, the national uh, footpath going along the coast there. Uh, goes all the way to Flamborough Head and we walked there yesterday so we're not going to go out there but also you can see those uh, blue markers there that describe uh, a viewpoint and yes it was a fantastic view out there but coming back to where we are I've had recommended to walk down Danes Dyke and there it is so what I would like to do is first of all see how long it's going to take to do this walk. We've only got a couple of hours. If you're in a national park you can do a thing called snap to grid and it will snap to grid along this kind of high detailed map. I'm not in a national park so I need to switch to the regular standard map and now what it's going to allow me to do is do this fabulous feature called snap to grid. Right, there's the campsite. Click on create route, hiking route, press for the first point on the map, second point, third point. You can see on the left there that it's snap is switched on. And that's got a corner there, but I don't need to press the points around the corner. I can come all the way over here to where Dane's Dyke is. It gave me a bit of a funny route there. And let's just take it all the way down to the coast and let it work out a route for me. So after we get down to the sea, we want to walk along the cliff. So I'm just going to zoom in there to make sure I pick up the cliff walk. Click on it. Let's click to zoom. Let's click to the route again. And then I think we're going to come along the cliff and then walk up this road here so let me just click there let it work it out again and finally back to the campsite let's click on the campsite and it's plotted my route to the, back to the campsite so that works out at 3.89 miles I've got my glasses on 1 hour 23 minutes so that's not too bad got a bit of time to have a look at the sea take some photographs maybe have a coffee yeah, that's going to be okay for our two hour walk. The next thing I would do is actually just check the elevation gain. I know on this particular walk it's not a huge, huge lot of elevation gain, so it's not going to take us any longer to, to walk. And along the bottom there, you can see that you've got the elevation profile. So that's all, that's all good. Save the route. And now it gives me an option to download the map, which I click on download and uh, it starts to download. Obviously really important to download the map because you don't want to rely on telephone signals when you're navigating. You know, pretty much virtually everywhere you go you'll get GPS signals but 4G, 3G etc is not uh, very reliable. But once this is into your phone you, you've, you're sorted. I've downloaded the map, I've got the coordinates, not a lot could go wrong in theory. We have our route and now it's time to go and navigate it. Okay, so ready to go. We've got a break in the uh, the weather, so I'm going to go into the uh, the app 
on my phone there you can see the club site and here's the route and if I've already downloaded the map so now I'm going to click on start route and we literally follow that arrow and if I point if I face in different directions like for example if I started to walk this way it would be obvious so we will go this way down the path to the road as you see that red triangle is moving down that blue line so we are on the right track. Pretty obvious here, but sometimes it's not that obvious and that can be really, really helpful. But what you can also do, you can zoom right out and zoom, that's the maximum, right in. But we're so closely zoomed in there, even like two or three footsteps, and you can see the arrow, the red triangle moving. So, as you can see now, we've just reached the point where we need to turn right. And we're heading down into Danes Dyke. So, as well as plotting the routes, obviously you need to find them in the first place. And I get them from a number of different sources. This one actually came from my mum. So, <laughs> she'd been here at the club site and said you should walk down Dyke's Dane. Uh, Danes, Danes Dyke. Danes <laughs> Dyke to the sea. <laughs> to the sea. Uh, but yeah, what other how else do I do it? Well, sometimes I uh, I just get the map out, look for the contour lines, places of interest, rivers, waterfalls. You know, just look at the map and see what there is, and join them all up. I also use OS Maps predefined uh, walks; they're good. And also, you know, just talking to people and being on site, so people know the local area. Talking to them, they'll say, "Oh, have you seen this?" So we talk to lots of people we and do. take their advice oh we and do. also obviously not forgetting the subscribers so every time we post a walk there's always a comment telling us how to pronounce the, uh, <laughs> the places we're at properly which is we are grateful for because we we know how bad we are especially in scotland and wales the mispronunciation has been quite bad hasn't it <laughs> it has so apologies for that yeah uh but yeah we love hearing everything you, you tell us about places where you've been and every time I get one I mark it on a map on the to-do list for the future so keep, Thank you. keep them coming <laughs> And now it's telling us that we're off course. This was intentional. So let's uh, have a look at where we're at. And you can see there, rather than follow the road, we've come into the woods, which we want to do. But really useful, if we get lost, we can just turn to the left and walk straight. And we're back on that blue line of the original footpath. But we're happy, we're good for this way. As I mentioned, the uh, OS maps are literally kind of the best maps in the world. Uh, I do have to pay a subscription for it. At the moment, it's $23.99 a year. Ouch. Uh, but how much do you think it would cost to buy the equivalent paper maps for what I've got on my app? Oh God, 80 quid. 80? Yeah. Higher? No. Come on. Go on, just tell me. Four thousand pounds. Because you've got all of Europe, haven't you? No, that's just the UK. Oh my goodness. So you get the uh, OS Explorer, the Land Ranger, the Tora, and basically have all the different levels uh, of, of maps. It is outstanding value and so useful. Uh, all you need to do is just download the relevant area where you, when you're going on a walk. It takes a few seconds. I always do it before I leave site because when you're on top of a mountain you don't always get a good signal <laughs> so yeah just make sure you download it oh, 
not, not had our eye on the map and we've overshot, but I don't mind that because we've landed on the beach, which is beautiful. Since I've lost Michelle. Oh, she, oh she's down there. Back on track now on our blue line, heading towards the cliff after seeing the beach. And we're back. Bit wet, bit windswept, but we're back. Yeah, you can have the best maps in the world, but you can't control the weather. No, especially in Yorkshire, as we've been told. <laughs> Well, safely back from our walk. Uh, just a couple of other things I need to mention. Yeah. OS Maps is great. We use it all the time in the UK. When we are abroad and when I'm recording the, the routes that we're taking to share, I use something called Wikiloc. Now this is a, also a great app. It's got lots of walks and hikes and mountain bike routes and climbing, all sorts of activities on there from like millions and millions and millions of subscribers to it. So it's a great place also for finding hikes. Uh, let me just do click on explore. So I've just clicked on explore and you can see just around here there's loads and loads of potentials. Sometimes there's almost too many. But this is where I'll publish my walks on the YouTube channel for you to, to download as GPX. And so just on the technical point there, GPX, these GPX files allow you to take the coordinates from one walk and put them into a different app. So sometimes I will do all the click to route on the OS maps and then import it onto Wikiloc to follow where I can take photographs and share it uh, myself. So another good app. I think that's about 9.99 uh, a year. So again, these aren't very expensive, but they're just absolutely great apps. The final point is we all need to stay safe. So obviously we do navigation using the iPhone uh, and not a map and compass. So when you're out, if it's at all kind of a risk, if you're on a mountain or something, they need to take extra precautions. So I will always take with me a battery pack and a cable to plug into the phone should the phone run out of battery. Also, I've got Michelle's phone as well as a backup phone. I hope you found that useful. It's uh, quite tricky to explain because it's not an exact science, but if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. So for now, goodbye uh, and happy navigating.